Welcome to the Financial Literacy Talk. Today we have Owl Jackson from Harvard Law School. Uh, welcome, Owl. Good to be here. You have been working on retiree healthcare costs. Can you describe your project? Well, what my co-author Alison Hoffman and I were interested in doing was looking at what experts had uh, said about the amount of retiree healthcare costs individuals will face. So the amount of money that they'll need to spend in retirement for healthcare costs. And what we wanted to do was compare uh, the expert views with what individuals actually know about retiree healthcare costs. So we uh, conducted a survey using the American uh, Life Panel, asking questions to try to figure out how well individual understandings matched up to uh, retiree healthcare costs estimates of experts. And this is actually a very complicated uh, question of financial literacy. This is not an, an easy question of do you understand inflation or bonds. It's really quite a complicated question and we were interested to see how well individuals uh, could do in, in responding to our survey. So what are the main results of this analysis? Well, there's, there's several results that are, that are interesting. Uh, one to begin with is just it's actually quite difficult to uh, figure out what the experts are saying about retiree health care costs. Um, there have been uh, quite a few studies that have been done uh, over the years by uh, people who were expert in medical um, expenses. And uh, there's a variety of methodologies. Sometimes long-term health care uh, is included. Uh, sometimes it's not included. Um, there are various ways of making the estimates. And uh, it really took quite a bit of work uh, on our part to really uh, summarize the literature and find out the answer. So uh, the first thing we learned is that it would actually be quite difficult for individuals to understand this uh, problem uh, if they were to take the time to try to investigate it. So. That was one result. How well did your respondent do in estimating the amount of saving that they would need to do to cover their health costs in retirement? The results were, were quite interesting, and there's a variety of ways of looking at the results. You can have a glass half full or, or half empty uh, uh, response to this. Um, the, uh, in, in terms of the half full size, if you looked at what the median uh, respondents uh, estimated, so you look right in the middle of the distribution, um, they tended to, to underestimate, um, but not wildly so compared to the experts. So the, the median responses were not uh, that far off the mark. They tended to be something like 25% below the estimated typical needs uh, from the experts. Um, but if you, if you dug down a little bit more, um, quite a few uh, individuals were making estimates that were just well beneath uh, what the experts were saying. So there's a substantial share, 25%, 30% of the population. They were clearly significantly underestimating uh, what would be needed. Uh, but there was sort of a certain wisdom in crowds of uh, the median um, estimate. Um, there were other things that were interesting um, uh, and, you know, uh, I think really important results of this research. Uh, one is that um, the older um, individuals uh, in our uh, population, which range from uh, 40 to 80, actually were better at estimating uh, the cost. Some of them were in retirement and were um, you know, better aware, had narrower bands of estimates than the, the younger folks. Um, so that was uh, interesting. Um, it seemed uh, that the younger respondents uh, were not anticipating the kind of cost increases that most experts think are going to come. So uh, their, their typical estimates were similar to the elderly, whereas, in fact, the experts think uh, through uh, inflation and through changes in government programs that they're likely to face much higher costs. And so they, didn't, they weren't anticipating this increase uh, according to um, our results, which was interesting. Um, and we also uh, found that when we tried, we had several treatments in our study, we tried to um, ask some of the questions in a simple way, and then we try to frame more carefully um, how we ask questions to kind of guide people to improve their uh, answers. And the interesting effect is this framing uh, really didn't have much of an impact on um, the overall assessment. So we could, we could make some improvements on premiums and some of the sub-questions, but when we got to the aggregate, how much would you need on the eve of retirement questions, um, the respondents didn't seem to be that affected by uh, the treatments, which was uh, an interesting result, I think, as well. Did you find anything that surprised you? In terms of the surprises, there were, were um, several that were interesting. Um, one of the things that the expert uh, literature is quite clear on is women have um, greater um, health care expenses in retirement. 
uh, mostly uh, because of longevity differences with men. But there was a quite clear effect um, in our survey responses that women estimated lower needs for retiree health care costs and uh, quite dramatically. So whereas they actually have expenses that are 40 percent higher, they in some instances were estimating half of what men estimated. So this is consistent with other um, areas of, of literature on gender differences, but it's quite pronounced how much uh, lower the women's estimates were than the men's estimates. Um, another interesting and somewhat surprising finding was going into the study we had thought that there might be some element of hyperbolic discounting that individuals would sort of correctly estimate or roughly correctly estimate the um, uh, monthly costs of uh, health care expenses in retirement but then when asked to discount them back to a present value of how much they need to save at retirement that they would excessively discount. Um, our results did not show that to be happening. In fact, when uh, we asked for lump sum estimates about what you would need on the uh, eve of retirement, our respondents estimated more than their monthly um, projections would suggest. And in, in many cases, they dramatically um, overestimated the amount that they would need at retirement, uh, hundreds, uh, 200, 300, 400,000 dollars more. So if, if anything, this was the opposite of hyperbolic discounting. And in some sense, one, one got the, the impression that many of the respondents were just throwing their hands up about how much they would need to save for retirement um, and came up with numbers that were just implausible amounts, $750,000, a million dollars. So um, it, it, it's, it's, you know, in technical terms, they were implying negative discount rates. So it's hypobolically uh, discounting, which I think has, actually has some interesting uh, policy implications that are, are worth pursuing. But isn't it hard for most people to um, estimate their expenses after retirement? And does financial literacy has anything to do with this? Well, it, it's definitely uh, difficult. And, uh, you know, we professors had actually trouble um, interpreting uh, the expert uh, literature. but. Uh, the interesting thing is in the United States, this is a calculation that people are being asked to make. This is, uh, it's necessary to understand what these costs are because they are a major component of retiree expenses. And we've uh, chosen to adopt social policies that puts the burden on individuals to cover these costs. And so it's definitely a challenge for financial literacy, but it's a challenge that we've asked people to take on. So it's one that uh, we as an, an academic academic community really need to come to grips with. So what question I had, what will you be working uh, next uh, given this really fascinating study that you've been conducting? Well, there, there's a good deal more work to be done with the data set that we've developed and um, more uh, work understanding um, the controlled relationships between uh, the various factors that we looked at and what people's estimates are. So there's a lot more work to be done there. Um, there is more work to be done, I think, with the uh, medical cost community and encouraging them to use their knowledge in a way that's more user-friendly. Um, there's lots of ways in which individual uh, costs vary based on, um, well, gender I already mentioned, wealth status, uh, the kind of insurance programs that one has, and um, for uh, whatever reason, uh, the literature so far really has not been designed to help individuals understand their costs. So I think more collaboration there would be useful. Um, our work just looks at what people think they need to save for retirement, uh, for retiree health care costs. We didn't ask uh, the next question, which is, well, what did you do? Uh, does better understanding of needs track to more savings? So that's an, an interesting extension. And then, of course, the policy implications of what we might do to better educate uh, certain populations, women, uh, younger uh, workers um, who have uh, seem to be making you know, more systematic errors. Uh, I think there's a lot of interventions that we could think about in our, in our preliminary uh, results in that area that the treatments uh, don't seem to have strong effects suggest that we really need to uh, think about stronger interventions and education programs uh, to make progress. So lots of work to be done. This is very exciting and I very much look forward to continuing reading your work. Great. Thank you very much for your support.